Hello, welcome back to Codenbox Automation Lab. This is Shurful. So in our last lecture, we got a little bit of idea about the APM basic concept, like what is uh, APM and uh, the benefits of, uh, of using the APMs for mobile automation. So in this lecture, we're going to see the architecture of APM, how APM exactly works. So at the beginning of the APM, you know, the APM will have a APM client code, like in in a simple word, like uh, where you know you have you need a uh, one of the IDE like uh, Eclipse or VS Code to write your code. So you are the client, you know, wh who is writing the code through one of the editor. So this is the part of the. APM client code where the client they write their automation code through one of the IDE so here you are going to write your code or automation code using any one of the language right so since APM accept multiple languages uh, uh, like a Java JavaScript Python C sharp Ruby so any through any one of the languages including the APM library code you are going to use to write your automation code over here and after that when you execute your code it will connect you know it will find the APM server so you need a APM server you have to install or download the APM server on your local machine and the APM server you know e, when you're going to configure at the beginning on your client code you have to also tell where your APM server so APM server will run through a, one of the port on your machine it could be 4723 or any one of the machine so in your client code that port number will be given so that when you execute your code it will find that port and or through that port it will communicate will you know will uh, communicate with your APM server and your code your this client code will be when it will be you know transferred to the APM server it will be wrapped with the JSON uh, with the JSON file, I mean with, with the JSON format. So your code will be wrapped as a JSON format because APM always accept or, or expect a JSON format code. So that, that's why the APM expect all different type of uh, code because you know it doesn't matter you write in Java or Python JSON is a you know neutral format it can you know uh, it can take any type of code so that's why JSON you know this is the JSON uh, format you know you convert uh, your code convert to the JSON or wrap to a JSON format and and transfer through a JSON protocol to a wire protocol to a APM server so APM server will accept your file your code as a JSON format and then it will it has the mechanism to interpret your code and go through the instruction I mean your code line by line and it will perform the execution on one of the you know your mobile like you perf you mentioned so on your in your code also you are going to mention in like what platform you know you are going to execute your automation is that Android or iOS so this is called desired capabilities so you ha have to mention your desired capabilities where the you are going to say the platform name pl you know that your your uh, your app name where is your app root directory of your app all those things you are going to mention as a part of your desired capabilities in your client code so APM will you know read that code will follow the instruction and will communicate will find that or it will execute your code or perform the code in whether it's Android or iOS through a automation framework so from the Android family or you can say nowadays it's uh, called the Google family from the Google family there is a automation framework is called UI automator or two or UI automator two option the newer newer version of UI automator two is there called your automation automator two option which is a automation you know framework that's a it comes from the Android and it's give you much better compatibility smooth testing to communicate with you between your server and your 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 uh, uh, execution platform so your execution platform could be the physical device or it could be your uh, virtual device so you can execute your code on physical device so you know through the APM 
through the APM architecture, through the APM server. That's possible. So you have to connect your physical device with your machine, and there is a, some setting so that you know your physical device can activate and can communicate or or, uh, or can talk to the APM server. So that when you run your code, the APM server will push your code or execute on your physical device. It can do other way too. You know there is a virtual device available. You know for Android through the Android Studio. You know there is a, a emulator. It's called emulator. Through the emulator, you can choose number of different Android virtual device, and then you know your app, your a, a execution can also can perform on those virtual device. Similarly, from the iOS family, they have another. They have also. Uh, written or given uh, there is an automation framework which is called XCUI test and which is you know again it is a, it's better to use their given automation framework because it works much better smooth way in regards compatibility right so so we're uh, you know you, you, that's why this is a recommended using the for the uh, if you want to execute your automation on iOS whether it's physical device or iOS uh, a virtual device but it's better to use this XQI test framework so for the iOS virtual device they have you know you have to use Xcode so you have to install the Xcode from the iOS and then through the iOS you can use one of the you know any device or you know any virtual device like a different ver version of the iOS phone and then you can you know you can execute your code up there and the, for the physical device is similar fashion that you have to you know connect your physical device uh, with your machine but you have to remember that to perform iOS you know uh, execution you must need you know Apple machine in an Apple machine, using Apple machine, you can use, you can uh, uh, execute your Android uh, testing, but but in Windows machine, you cannot install, you cannot you know, perform your iOS uh, execution. So that's why it's better to have, uh, if you want to execute both of you know the both platform, like your app in both different platform, Android and iOS, then it's better to have your iOS machine. But for Windows machine, it will work with for only for the Android. Okay. So that's a way it's communicate with your virtual or physical device and also after it's execute or perform the uh, your test cases it will respond back the same way through your UI automator through your uh, test frameworks it will come back to the APM server and APM server will also you know send back the response through a JSON format to your client code and your client cl code I mean like your IDE say example Eclipse it will show your response up there right and then we'll see the outcome up there okay so this is pretty much you know that's all about the APM architecture you know this is very high level architecture but in our next lecture we'll see how we can install you know uh, uh, what different type of uh, you know the tools you need to install as I said like over here you need one IDE you need to install APM and also APM is written on node platform so you need it uh, you need also you have to install the a uh, node on your on your machine too because without a node you know the APM is the you know uh, part of the node module so you need to install or have on your machine is a node right so so we'll, in our in our upcoming lecture we'll see you know uh, how to uh, you can uh, we're going to configure the APM server and then you know uh, all all other different tools you need like the, the Java you need node version you need how is going to be create you know environment variable how we're going to up you know uh, write all the code all those things we're going to see one by one okay so that's all for the uh, today's cell about the APM architecture and stay tuned. Wait for the next lecture. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.